Okay. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining. Um, I am Jack Moffat. And uh, while, while I, I am uh, one of the co-founders of IXDA Pittsburgh and one of the current co-chairs, um, I, I try, I, I occasionally, uh, my team convinces me to, to, uh, to speak. Um, and, and so I've, I've agreed to do that this month. Uh, so thank you all for joining me. It's nice to see some uh, friends uh, in the crowd. Hi, Paul, good to see you. And uh, Dan, great to see you. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Hi, um, yeah, great to see you. So I have a story to share with you all. And um, don't worry, you're not seeing slides because I don't have any slides for this talk. I'm, I'm, I'm giving this talk naked, if you will. I've got my pants on, but no <laughs> slides. Um, so you're not missing anything, it's just me. Um, I've never had a manager with UX experience. Oh. Now, that doesn't seem to have hurt me too awfully much. I've had a very successful career so far. Um, I'm now a manager myself. Still, I can't help but feel that I would be better um, that I would have been more successful or, or successful sooner um, if, if I had had a, a design manager in the mix. Um, I guess I'd have to call myself part of the old guard at this point. Um, I was in the third graduating class of the very first Masters of Interaction Design program in the world here at CMU. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, and um, while I, I had reasons to stay in Pittsburgh, most of my classmates upon graduation were going out to Silicon Valley. They were joining, you know, IBM, Oracle, Microsoft, uh, Razorfish, if you remember them, uh, big at the time. Um, but I started my career at a small software development firm named Inmedius here in Pittsburgh. It was a spinoff from CMU. Um, and it had an uncharacteristic understanding of the value of design for, for a, a company at that time. Um, they already had four other designers on staff, uh, very abnormally high design to developer ratio. And uh, so it, it, it was a really attractive company to, for me to join. Um, now, when I first joined, my first manager was a marketing guy. Uh, that, uh, that fortunately didn't last very long. But then I had a series of, uh, of managers that had been software engineers, right? It was a software development company. It was founded by software engineers. And, and so that's who were in the management positions. Um, and that's not always great for, uh, for a designer. Uh, in fact, one of my managers told me during my annual review that my skill set was deep, but without much breadth. Even though I could do visual design and interaction design and user research and write HTML and CSS and photography and, and work with video, and my breadth just didn't include some specific skills that he considered to be very important and he either devalued or simply wasn't aware of many of the skills that I had. And I, I think what he really meant was that I wasn't a developer, but <laughs> my managers weren't all bad. I've had some very good managers um, that, that have valued my contributions, they've appreciated my skills and, and they've pushed me to grow. And I've had managers that have taught me quite a bit about business and about management and about um, the overall product development process, but I've never had a design manager. Now, um, everyone I've spoken with about this agrees that it's more important to have a good manager than to have one with design experience. A good manager is going to do some work to understand what you do and, and what you need to do it well, right? Um, 
the you, you'll have to be self-driven to continue learning. Um, you'll have to keep up with the industry on your own. Um, and, and attending events like this are, are a great way to do that. Um, I fortunately found what at the time was a Yahoo mailing list about interaction design, and it eventually turned into IXDA, the Interaction Design Association. And I have uh, those people, the people who were, uh, I was discussing things with on that list and, and that organization to thank for keeping me going when um, most of the designers that I started with at that company left, uh, pursued other uh, other opportunities, and and I was pretty much left on my own as a UX team of one for a, for a number of years. But you know, a good manager is going to push you to do that, right? To 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 make sure that you have the opportunity to do that. So, given the choice um, between two good managers it's going to be advantageous for a designer to have a manager with design experience. A manager who completely understands how UX should function within an organization, right? Who stands up for design within uh, the management ranks, who understands how to hire designers, who understands how to develop designer skills, uh, both individually and as a team. Um, a manager who understands the tools and the methods that designers use. Now, there's currently a huge demand for UX managers. I did a search uh, for UX manager jobs on LinkedIn just yesterday and got over 4,000 results in the US. And of course, you know, so I'm sure some of those were, were invalid hits, but um, there are a lot of UX manager jobs out there. I know of six in Pittsburgh right now. Um, and, and there are several reasons for this. Um, one, there are a lot of companies right now, especially enterprise companies that are building UX teams, right? They've, they've, they've developed that understanding that this is what they need to excel as a company or to survive. Um, and so they're going out there and they're, they're buying entire design firms, right? Acquiring design firms to be their internal um, UX teams. That's happening all over the place, has been for a few years. And um, there aren't enough experienced UX managers <laughs> to, to lead all of these teams that are being built, right? It takes a long time to develop a manager, uh, a good one, right? And, and so the growth is outstripping the supply. Um, now, Many of the UX managers today, uh, especially in enterprise, uh, share a path similar to, to mine. So see if this sounds familiar to some of you. Um, maybe you spent time working as a UX team of one. Um, maybe you were even the first UX hire at your company. Uh, and at some point, more designers were brought on board. Maybe the organization was growing and realized it needs more of you. Maybe you convinced them that, that you were stretched too thin and they need more of you. In, uh, in my case, um, there were a couple of designers that we had stationed um, at a military base in Maryland uh, on contract with the Navy, uh, working with explosive ordnance disposal under the direction of our customer, right? Um, and we decided uh, at, at one time to, that, that we were going to end that particular part of the business. We pulled those designers back inside and they started working with me on, on the, the products that I, I was working on. So whatever the case, suddenly where once there was one or two, now, now there's a team, right? And the team needs leadership. Um, now, in, in this scenario, you know, you have seniority, 
Um, you've been successful so far. So senior management naturally offers to promote you to be a manager. And um, while you've been a UX team of one and you've never had a UX manager, you want to make sure that these new colleagues, these new team members have what you never had, right? You want them to have a better experience than you have had. Uh, so when the company offers to promote you to management, whatever uh, reservations you may have, right, you accept. I hadn't really aspired to be a manager. Um, sure, I had thought about the possibility, but it, it's not something I was really working towards. Um, I became a manager because there was a need. There was an empty space and, and I filled it. You might call it horror vacui, right? The, the fear or dislike of leaving empty spaces. Um, they say nature abhors a vacuum. So do leaders. When a leader encounters a void, they, they immediately put plans in place to fill it. Right? This, this could be a void in process, could be a void in understanding, a void in skill, uh, or a void in responsibility, especially responsibility. So what I'm talking about here is servant leadership. Right? Don't become a manager because you want a bigger paycheck or because you want more influence or because you want to be a leader be a leader first, be influential first. And then when there's a need, when there's a vacuum of responsibility, you'll be ready to fill it. As Jared Spool uh, has said, to be a manager, you have to be promoted. To be a leader, all you need are followers. Yeah. The best managers are first leaders. Now, several things happen when you're promoted to be a manager. And the first thing is that you realize you have a lot of new things to learn. Um, depending on your, the, the organization you're in, you may be given some training, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, in my case, uh, it came about a year after my promotion, um, and it was primarily focused on the law, right? Keeping me from getting myself and the company into a lawsuit. Um, but you're not likely going to be trained on how to lead a design team. There are certainly some companies that, that have very well-established, um, hello, Kat very well established teams and 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 training IBM uh, famously um, has has a training program for for their people but um, in most companies you know they're not going to have training specifically for you as the leader of a design team and you're going to have a serious case of imposter syndrome um, Every manager I've talked to about this adamantly admits to having had imposter syndrome. Uh, and, and more often than not, they still do, at, at least some of the time. But I'm here to tell you it's, it's going to be okay. If your journey has been anything like the one I've been uh, recounting here, um, you already have a pretty good idea of what you need to do. You've had some experience with good managers and you've had some experience with not so good managers. So you, you already have a pretty good idea of, of what you should and, and shouldn't do as a manager. You already know um, what you yourself needed, right? What you were missing. Um, when you were in that position and, and you know how to learn on the job. 
you're already self-motivated to, to continuously improve, right? Um, maybe you attend conferences, uh, you find peers that will sympathize with you, you know, give you a, a shoulder to cry on. Um, you'll find mentors that will advise you. Um, you read a lot of books. Um, speaking of which, I want to make uh, a couple of recommendations, uh, uh, good book recommendations for uh, anybody interested in learning about management. Uh, and in fact, uh, let me go ahead and post these links right into the chat for you. Um, so the first one, uh, The Making of a Manager by Julie Zhu. Excellent book, really, really good. And, and relating a very similar uh, story to my own. Um, Org Design for Design Orgs by Peter Merholz and Kristen Skinner. Another really, really good book. A um, lot of great information about you know, design operations. Um, the first book that I read as a manager uh, recommended to me by Dan Saffer, uh, Managing People by Eric Swenson. That one's not specifically about design, that's just general uh, management. And I also recommend a really great conference talk by Doug Powell from Interaction 20. Uh, it was titled Designers as Leaders. Now that we have a seat at the table, how do we prove we belong? Um, and it relates a lot of uh, the, the work that he's done at uh, IBM. Really, really good advice there. Uh, and, and I encourage anybody else out there who has suggestions to please uh, go ahead and, and add them in the chat. Now, somewhat related to imposter syndrome, the, the second thing that happens when you become a manager, um, you're going to have this strong desire to be right. After all, right, you're in charge. You're the one that your team is supposed to look to for direction and guidance, right? So, so shouldn't you know more than everyone you're managing? It, it feels like if you're wrong, you, you have failed them, right? And maybe you don't deserve to be a manager after all. But um, your job as a manager isn't to be right. That that's not your job. In fact, the less decisions you make for your team, the better. Your job is to develop and empower your team so that they can make the decisions and they can determine what is right. Every one of those books that I recommended will tell you that you should be hiring people that are smarter than you. If you do your job well, your team members will eventually surpass you. They'll become better at doing the work than you are. Because the third thing that happens when you take on a management role is that you stop designing. And that scares a lot of people. You have a new set of responsibilities. Um, that are going to leave you with a lot less time to get your hands dirty. You're going to spend a lot more time attending meetings, so many meetings. My designers often comment on how full my calendar is. You'll spend a lot more time responding to email and Slack and Skype and whatever other channels, communication channels you, you utilize you're going to spend a lot more time dealing with administrative work and bureaucracy and red tape, but you'll deal with it gladly so that your team doesn't have to. You'll spend a lot more time reviewing the work of others than doing work yourself. And I've got to say that that tends to be the best uh, part of my week. And this is one of the big reasons that designers don't become managers. We really like designing, right? This is something we're passionate about. It, it's more than just a job to us. And we don't want to stop doing that. 
um, a lot of design managers end up eventually returning to contributor roles for this very reason. I encourage any design manager to find something that you can do to continue designing, continue making things, keep a little side project going and, and, and set aside the time in your schedule to work on it. Um, that, that's going to keep you engaged and, and keep you from burning out. And I, I, I must say, it, it took me a while, um, probably the better part of a year, uh, to reach the point at which I was able to be just as gratified by the successes of my team um, as I had been of, of my own work, of, of doing the work myself. It was really hard to let go of the work. Um, you know, there were things that I knew I could just knock out in a couple of hours that, that were going to take a junior designer, you know, many iterations um, to, to get through. But I had to learn to let go because I was just stealing the opportunity for them to learn. But I have good news. <laughs> if you can reach that point, and you will, you'll also likely discover that you can approach management as a design problem. And that means you get to keep designing. You're just designing with different material and, and different tools. So um, very often, um, I, I, I frequently attend conferences. Um, and when I would tell uh, my, my friends, my colleagues that uh, I had become a manager, the first thing they would ask was, do you like it? <laughs> the expectation seemed to be that I, I wouldn't like it as much as being a designer. And it took time. I had to grow into it, but I do. I do like it. I find it very rewarding to provide uh, a safe and supportive space for, for designers to try and to fail and to grow. I love teaching. Um, in fact, I've been teaching as an adjunct for uh, 15 years now. Um, and, and that's another common trait I've found among UX managers. A lot of them uh, tend, to, uh, tend to teach part-time. And I really enjoy mentoring my team. I've, I've felt exaltation when one of my designers was, was praised by a customer for a job well done. I've, I've been elated when, when presenting a well-earned raise. Um, don't get me wrong, it's, it's not all flowers and sunshine. There have been days when I've felt that yoke of responsibility. Um, there are days when I'm so frustrated that I'm ready to beat on things, drums, beat on drums. I'm a drummer. <laughs> Drumming is great stress relief. Yeah. And I, I cried on my wife's shoulder, literally, the first time I had to uh, lay off a talented and, and valued employee. But I also saw to it that she was prepared with the experience to find employment elsewhere and a portfolio to prove it. Um, I was confident that she would find employment in short order, and she has. She's now a UX team of one. <laughs> the first at a company that may be hiring a couple more in a year or two. So the cycle repeats itself. The first time I attended a conference with my new title uh, of manager on my badge, um, a young woman asked me, what is a UX manager? <laughs> and as I recall, I, I gave her a pretty lame answer. It, she, she caught me off guard. I, I, I wasn't expecting somebody to ask that. 
Um, and I, I told her that well, I, I lead a small team of designers. And, um, I'd like to rectify that lapse now, if I may. Um, so, so what is a UX manager? A good UX manager is a gas. No, I, I don't mean we're the life of the party and I don't mean we smell bad. If you remember your elementary school science, you know that a gas expands to fill its container. Okay. We expand to fill the roles in which we find ourselves. We learn and we grow and we fail and we grow and we help others grow along with us. Uh, in his article, Leadership is the Strategic Issue, uh, Richard Farson told us that designers have even better preparation than most to assume leadership. They are especially qualified. We're gap fillers. We're the glue, the, the connective tissue. We're the bridge builders. Designers have a skill set that allows them to meet all the various stakeholders in the middle. Uh, to facilitate compromises, to provide options, to communicate a vision, um, to, to orient everyone towards a common goal. Isn't that also what a good manager does? So I want to encourage you, when the opportunity presents itself, it's okay to doubt your readiness, but don't be afraid to step up to the challenge. You can be a gas, you can expand, you can fill the vacuum. We need more UX managers, especially ones that don't look like me. Um, so why not you? I'd like to thank um, Anna Abovayan, uh, Ryan Cummings, and Carol Ford uh, for allowing me to, to interview them as I was preparing for this talk. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, managers that I've learned so much from, especially uh, Rob Veltri and Mark Shipley. Um, and with that, I'd love to answer any questions you all have. So this is Julia, I guess, should I raise my hand? Hi, Julia. Hi. Oh, no, just, just speak up. Okay, so, <laughs> so that was great. I loved your talk. It just, uh, the, the whole experience of being sort of a, a person who loves what they do and then finding that there's a need and filling it is something that I can relate to totally. But um, I, would, I would ask you this, what, how do you see, um, how do you see yourself in 20 years? What are you doing? Huh? Are you managing? Are you designing? What, how does all that evolve? That's a really good question. 20 years is a long time. Uh, 20 okay, 10. years, 20 10? years, I might be retiring. Wow. No, oh, don't, you're never going to retire, <laughs> I don't think, right? You never retire. You always design. That's, That's my true. challenge to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, 10 years then. Um, yeah, so I just started a new position, still, still with the same company, still with Boeing, but um, at, a, at a different place in the organization um, with uh, a, a lot more responsibility. So I've just taken on a, a new challenge. And I think, you know, it's going to take several years for me to... Um, to do what I think needs to be done there uh, and be successful. So um, certainly for a number of years, I see myself uh, taking on this new challenge that I just started. Uh, so I, I do see myself still at Boeing, still managing. Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to what uh, the opportunities there um, could, could potentially result in. Congratulations, yeah. that's great. Thank you.
Others, please uh, just come off mute and speak up. Hi, uh, Zach Schweitzer. Um, Hi, Zach. Gonna... Hey, thanks so much for the talk. Really enjoyed it. Um, appreciate the perspective ac across the board. Um, we're actually party lining this with a few of my my colleagues. <laughs> so, oh great, I was on the line with um, you know, curious about you know, for for some people, really, it is going to be about you know continuing that individual contributor track right throughout their career. But Absolutely. I think they, you know, they often will have lots to offer in terms of mentorship and leadership, like you alluded to. Um, I wonder if, you know, you, you, if there's any bits of wisdom you'd care to share for, for those folks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and, and it, w when you reach that point, right, it's, it's very similar. Um, management involves a lot of those administrative things. But from a leadership perspective, um, you know, a, a senior designer, um, hopefully you're, you're being given responsibilities where you are leading the team in, in the activities that, the, that the, the team is engaged in, and you are helping to, to define um, those activities and, and the way you go about them, right? So you're, you're a key contributor to the development of your design ops, right? Your design operations, um, how your organization functions. And so, um, you know, the, the, the larger the organization you're in, uh, the more likely you're going to have somebody who is um, like leading design ops as, as their role, right? So maybe that's something that as a senior leader uh, you would want to go into, or maybe you're acting in a, uh, a project management role, right? Where you're, you're actually leading uh, a project. Maybe you're even um, dipping your foot into uh, product management as well. You know, a lot of UX folk are, are uh, ideally suited to the role of product manager. So there are, there are a lot of, of um, different paths that, that that senior role can take. But even if you just continue on straight on the path of, of, of practitioner, contributor, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, always working with, with your manager to say, okay, you know, what is that next step? What is that next challenge? What is it that you need now from a personal development perspective um, to keep you interested, to keep you learning, to keep you engaged? That's what it's really all about for me is, is that personal development, professional development, um, and, and making sure that everybody's still looking at, okay, what's next, right? Just like Julio was, was asking me, where are you going next? And, and what do we need to do to help you get there? Thanks so much. Jack, I have a, a comment and then a question. Uh, I was interested to hear you mention servant leadership because I've always thought UX design is really inherently a practice of servant leadership. You're, if, you're, if you're practicing goal-oriented design, you're, you're helping others achieve their goals. That's right. And, you know, that's just the, the basic of servant leadership. Yeah. Um, I was curious, you know, you, you, you mentioned all the jobs out there today for UX managers and you did some kind of a search to, to prove it. I wondered if you looked at the, um, you, you must have skimmed at least the um, required qualifications, but what did you see most often in terms of the qualifications in a job announcement for a UX manager? Was it a lot of management experience, a lot of UX experience? Was there, was there that split? I, if you looked, I wondered what you saw. Boy, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't do that, um, do a survey to that, that level of, of detail. But uh, now that you say that, I'm going to do that before I give this talk to, uh, to IXDA Hanoi uh, in a couple weeks. <laughs> I can speak a little bit to that. I've been looking at um, 
UX manager roles that have been out there and open for a little while now, uh, just to kind of see, you know, what what they're looking for, what uh, what sort of things I might want to start working on in terms of like, you know, a, a plan for getting into a UX management role in the future. And it does seem like there's kind of a chicken and egg problem where, uh, you know, if you want to maneuver yourself into a UX management position, you kind of have to have experience in management to get one of these external postings. Um, you know, so <laughs> it's definitely an interesting thing, you know, from, from my perspective, at least somebody who actually has, you know, experience managing one person. Um, many of these places or many of these postings have shown that, uh, you know, they want somebody with three to five years experience leading teams of 10 people, you know, like that's, that's a, a lot of people definitely more than, than I've got experience, uh, you know, leading. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is, that is the sense that I have of the state of the industry right now is that, yeah, um, they are looking for years of management experience and, um, you know, as I said earlier, there just aren't that many of us, um, and, and even fewer that, that are looking for, for jobs, right? Um, managers, you know, you, I, again, this is just the sense that I've gotten is that managers aren't as quick to jump to new positions, um, because, you know, there, there is this investment in a team, right? Um, so it, it's not just leaving one job and going to another job. There's more to it than that. And so it's not something that you're going to leave lightly. So yeah, between um, the, the expectations of the company, and, and I think that's why so many designers who become managers have a similar path into it as the one I relayed, right? Where they, they just, they move into that position within their current company rather than being hired by a company for the first time as a manager. Can I jump in? Please do, Dan. Um, just, just on the point you were making, I think one of the advantages of hiring from within is that that designer has experience with the company um, and really you take advantage of that institutional knowledge, if, if you will, and also knowing the team of designers as well as management. So there Absolutely. is, there's, there's logic to that. Um, just a quick uh, note to Julia's point about retirement. Um, I retired three and a half years ago, Julia, and from, from, from teaching. Um, and I'm not, I haven't retired from design and I certainly haven't retired from life. Um, I just retired from my job, which That's asked so me, awesome. <laughs> required me to teach, you know, um, semester after semester and so on, which I love to do. I did it for 45 years, but I just needed a change. My body and my bones and my mind just said, slow down, try something else. And I love retirement. I love being in charge of my time. Um, but and you're still I, designing. I, I'm sorry? You're still designing. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And, and I wanted to relay, if anything, a little bit of advice back to what you were talking about, uh, Jack, and being, being made manager. So um, midway in my teaching career at CMU, um, I was asked to be head of the department. And that was a big change because I already envisioned I'd have to slow down my teaching and I'd have many more meetings as Jack described. But it was really important for me that I had a very good friend who was in the English department and he was kind of my mentor. He had been head of English for 10 years or more. And he just gave me some advice, you know, um, in terms of thinking about this job and more about what it meant to be the head of a department. Um, so not unlike being a manager of a group of, a group of people. And that I thought really helped me. But I will always remember one of the things that he said that I had difficulty believing at first. 
And this is basically what he said. And I wonder, Jack, if you have experiences or any of you, any of you who are managers, but, but what this fellow said was, Dan, you're, you know, you're a nice guy. You seem to be well liked by your faculty and that's probably why they want you to be head and all that. But he said, you will find as the years go by that because you are in charge, you are making decisions, you are making decisions, not just about the department, about, but about individual faculty and um, their salaries, um, their schedules and so on. He said, you will find a distance beginning to grow between you and these faculty. The, it's not that they won't be your friends, but they will not be as close to you, you know? And I thought, no, no, come on, that, that can't happen. And, you know, over six years, I sense that, you know, I still have very good friends among the faculty, even though I'm retired. Um, but there was that, that distance, you know, and do you find that, uh, Jack, or any of you who are managers? Um, I'll, I'll answer first, and, I'll, and then I'll let anybody else chime in. Um, I was never in a position where I had somebody who was my peer that I then became a manager of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I had seniority immediately when I was given my team. Um, so, so there wasn't a, that kind of change to, to happen. Anybody else? So as a, I worked in industry for many, many years um, and as a software developer. And so I kind of hated giving up all the fun of doing software development to become a manager. But I have to say, um, because I had aspirations and ambitions, I actually did want to be a manager. Um, I didn't have close friendships at work. My friendships were outside of work. And I know so many people, you spend so many hours of your life at work, but being um, a manager and having to make decisions about people and teams, um, to me, that was, and I feel now reflecting later on, that was a big gap, but it, I felt it was necessary at the time that I couldn't have those friendships because there's favoritism and there's, you know, all those things. So there's no question that um, you have to find your friendships elsewhere, which are an important part of life. But um, at work for me, that wasn't that wasn't the thing. Yeah. So. And that's and that's probably very smart advice. I did have a similar experience in in two different places. I, I also teach uh, at the college level, but a very small college, W and J College here in Washington, PA. And before coming here, my wife and I we were both at Gettysburg College. And, you know, there she was an associate uh, dean for a while. When we came here, I was a department head and then an associate dean. And I wouldn't say in any case did we have, you know, salary control over people or, you know, just that this, this, we're such small colleges that that's all resides in the dean's office at different levels. But there was nevertheless uh, that distancing that you described um, when, you know, originally just having a large group of faculty and staff friends uh not you know not an unfriendliness just a just a just a barely perceptible distance which i also have to speculate is the fact that we're also getting older <laughs> if you're a manager <laughs> if you're you know a department head or an associate dean or something you are you know the young people keep coming through <laughs> And so they have, they do have their own friend groups at a certain point and you're just, you know, you're not, not in the same uh, generation as them any longer. And that can be a, a, a cause of what you're talking about as well, I think. Yeah, Julia just posted in the chat, when you're a manager, your employees cannot commiserate with you about management. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll, I'll chime in, Jack. I had a, a couple interesting thoughts um, while you were speaking. You know, after doing this kind of work for a couple of decades in consulting, you get to see it inside a lot of organizations. And I think, you know, a lot of the conversations are about managing people, but 
folks who are doing this kind of work are sometimes this ambassador between the design world and the rest of the business as well. And a lot of times you get help from all sorts of places on the managing people side, because that's, you know, kind of has universal problems, but the design managers or folks in that role have a, have a difficult time with the rest of the organization. And a lot depends on the culture of the organization or maturity or where they are with, with design. And I think it's interesting how, um, you know, a lot of things we've all seen change over the last 20 years with design and business is how much the way businesses work um, have started to get influenced by how design works and how designers work and, you know, getting comfortable with iteratively designing and iteratively releasing things and having teams work with autonomy um, and uh, open-ended discovery and kind of balancing the worlds of qualitative work and quantitative work. Um, so I think it's, it's kind of encouraging to see how all of us change the, the little universes we work in every day as, as managers, as designers, as, as people who are trying to keep organizations focused on doing, doing good things for the, the people we serve and, and produce products for and things like that. So I, I appreciated your, your musings and your thoughts and it got my brain going a little bit too. And um, it's, it's great. Thanks, Jack. Oh, good. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, and uh, that that makes me think that one of the one of the best things you can have as a manager is uh, a a non manager within your organization who gets it. Design. <laughs> oh my, yeah, such a big help. Frank, are you raising your hand? Please. Yeah, speak up. yeah. Uh, I'm just interested in knowing um, those of you out in the field. Has it? Uh, ha have you? Has has the? Would you say the game has changed to where more companies realize the value of putting money and funding into user research and this design thinking procedures, or are you still encountering friction? And if so, um, have you have you stories of how you had to persuade? Uh, the other uh, parts of the company that uh, that this is and it's not only not only a necessary I mean not only a useful but a necessary uh, investment for the companies. So I'll I'll answer your your first two questions yes and yes. <laughs> companies are um, seeing the value of investing in research and design, and yes we're still seeing friction <laughs> in trying to do research and design. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's certainly becoming much more common, uh, much more appreciated, but there are still pockets where you have to fight even within a company, um, especially one you know, on the scale of, of Boeing. Um, so it, there, there are, there are, places where I'm working where, you know, everybody's on board and great research is being done and everything's working the way it should, should be. And, and then just the next hour, I'm in a different meeting where I'm, we're having to teach people, you know, the value of design still. I think teaching the value of design will never end. <laughs> Maybe you just get better at it. It's certainly made for quite a career. True, true. By the way, are you still in Pittsburgh? Oh, yeah. Oh, you are, OK. Yep. Well, Pittsburgh. What, what, what does that mean? I know, I, know where, I know where Jack's secret hideout is. Swickly. Any other questions?
Sorry, who listens to Wickley? <laughs> uh, Paul does. I do. All right, Paul. <laughs> well, Paul, we'll, we'll have to see you sometime. I live in Swickley too. <laughs> And uh, we have we have several other designers in the the Pittsburgh community living out here with us. Thank you so much. I am just I I I want the copy of the recording because my son is a he's actually a, um, a mechanical engineering Mechie grad from CMU, but he works for a design firm and he designed designs products all day, and that whole concept of you know, being a manager, becoming a manager, being a servant leader, I think this could be a really wonderful message for him. So thank oh, good. you. Good, good, good. Yeah, um, we will, I will be putting it up on, we have a YouTube channel uh, that we've been putting our, our events up on, so. Okay, well, thank you all for attending. It was really great seeing some of you old friends. Um, and uh, hope we'll see you again uh, at our next event. Thanks, Jack. That was very good. Thanks, Dan. Really good to see you. Good seeing you. Bye-bye. Thanks.